Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, Lamentations chapter 5, verse 17, and Luke chapter 3, verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for showing up and always being there for us, Lord God. Thank you for keeping us. You've proven yourself so much more than the accusations of the spirit. You've proven yourself more than our doubts. You've proven ourselves greater than our circumstances. Lord God, you are God. We say thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So I love this verse. So funny because once I, I this was the verse, I didn't even realize it, that what this verse actually was. But, um, and you know, God is just so amazing because he's with us, right? He does not want us in a state of fear, he doesn't want us in a state of anxiety. He's telling us, he's commanding us to fear not for I am with you. So even when that circumstance, that situation and, and the enemy is, is pointing the finger and saying this and that about you, you have to put your trust in God, right? Are you the Lord's? Do you belong to him? Then you can put your trust and your hope in him. You can seek his face right? It says, be not dismayed for I am your God. So when the accuser comes in and he says that these circumstances are because you don't have God, right? And you know that you have God, you just stick with God, right? Stand firm in faith, get out the word of God, get out Isaiah 41 10 and, and read it to yourself. Fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. It says, I will strengthen you. Glory be to God. God is going to give you strength to endure through all circumstances. He's going to give you the strength to press on and keep moving on in God. He is an amazing God. It says, I will help you. God is going to be right there in your problem, in your stress, right? In that stressful moment where you just feel like you can't take any more. He's right there. He's saying, I will help you, right? When nobody else is there for you, he's going to be your help. And when no one will pick up the phone, he's going to pick it up, right? When when no one is is there to see your tears, he sees your tears, he keeps your tears in a bottle, the Bible says, right? He he has keeping a track record and he's going to repay you back for any loss and stress and strain and agitation that you have faced in this world. Remember, if you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. It says, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right. And God is going to keep you lifted up, meaning from the attacks of the enemy, as the enemy is trying to sift you and trying to do all these things to you, he's going to hold you up. He's going to be the strength that you need. He's going to be the thing that you are resting on that foundation. It says, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So God is right. He is righteous. He is just. And when you hear about that right hand, you're thinking, about the hand of blessing. God is going to hold you up in blessing. He's going to hold you up in strength and he's going to hold you up in righteousness. God's got your back. Amen. So when you know that he's your God and you're putting your hope and your trust in him, it's regardless of the circumstance. It's from, it's from the inside out out right so yeah the outside may be doing some things right but guess what God is upholding you he's keeping you he's keeping that outside as well as he is making sure that inside is clean why because you are his and he is your God it says for I am your God 
Hallelujah. All right. And so the second verse is Lamentations chapter five, verse 17. It says, for this, our hearts had become sick for these things. Our eyes have grown dim. All right. And so this is because of idolatry, right? God was not their God, right? Remember, they were supposed to be chastened. They were supposed to be the children of Israel, children of God. And yet God was was allowing their enemies to come in and just overtake them. Why? Because they had not made God their Lord. They had not feared God and what was happening to them. It says, for this, our heart has become sick. For these things, our eyes have grown dim. So they are not being held up, right? They did not stay in faith with God. They served other gods. They consulted other nations for help when they needed help. They they had temples and all kinds of stuff. They were just going against the things that God had told them to uphold, right? And, and they were treating God as if he was one of many gods, And God was displeased with that. So he allowed their enemy to come in and ransack them. And and now they were turning back to him. And so in this way, you know, God uses the enemies of the people who are supposed to be chastened. And he, he allows that system to check them, right? And so, you know, when God is doing that, all all we can do is stand back and say, Lord, help, right? And and so that's what these people were doing. They were crying out to God. It says, for this, our heart has become sick. For these things, our eyes have grown dim. All right. And so the third verse um, that the Lord gave me was Luke chapter three, verse 12. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what shall we do? All right. And this is John the Baptist. And so he is, um, he has just um, been baptizing the people and, and he was speaking to the people and here the people were actually coming as individuals and asking him, well, what should we do? What should we do? Right. And, and he was responding with, you know, if you have two tunics, give one of them to your neighbor. So that was to the crowd, um, meaning that they needed to love their neighbor as their self. Right. Um, he was telling the, the, the soldier to, um, not extort money from people. And then he was telling the tax collectors not to collect more than they were authorized to collect. Right. And so it says tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And see, that's the key. You know, it's not about the way you look. It's about what's going on in your heart. That tax collector, those tax collectors, when they were out there being baptized by John the Baptist, they wanted to continue in that way. God desires for us to continue in that way. He doesn't want us to just receive a momentary baptism and walk in your own way. He doesn't want our our hearts to grow sick, right? And our eyes to become dim. He wants us to continue to abide with him continue to stand fast with him and to continue to be upheld and strengthened by him right but we need to walk in the way that we are instructed in these people were coming to John the Baptist because they knew he was a man of God and when he was giving them instruction when he was giving them teaching they were taking it seriously each individually, right? And the the Holy Spirit does the same way with us now, you know, as the Holy Spirit instructs us um, through the word of God, through speaking to our hearts, we need to take it seriously and walk in that way. We don't need to walk away from that thing. When God is showing us a part of ourselves, we need to stick with him, right? Sometimes the symptoms that people are facing of their life, the symptoms and the the disease state of their life is a symptom of the sin that they're walking in, right? It doesn't mean that there is nothing that will ever happen. No, but um, for this in Lamentations, you know, it was because 
they had turned against God, right? They were not God's people. Remember in Isaiah um, 41, 10, it says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You have to turn to God. You must first believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You must first turn to him. You have to um, give in and 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 let him know that he is your God and and he is going to just bombard you with that love and that keeping nature that he has so that you can be blessed and you can continue to walk in the blessing. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for keeping us and guiding us and upholding us with your righteous right hand, Lord God. Help us to not have fear. Help us to not be dismayed. Help us to be strengthened by you and upheld by you. Lord God, forgive us for our sins. Help us to walk in your way. When you tell us something about ourselves, help us to keep walking in that direction that you have pointed us in and not turn away from it, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.